Okay, so... Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing well today. Personally, I didn't get a lot of sleep. And you'll have to excuse me if I sound hoarse at all because my throat's just a tiny bit sore. But in any case, let's just get to it. There we go. Ah, yeah, two days in a row, I know. Wild. So here we are. For the record, we've got Fuifo back. He was taken by a bug last time. But I fixed it. So, he's back. Not sure why there was so much noise on the mic. It's probably because I had the fan pointed basically right at it. That's my bad. The plan. That's a tough that's a tough question. Hello Naho. It's good to see you. As ever. I think I would like to know what happened to this poor Spathy. So let's head on up to Epsilon Gruis. There's three map modes. One of them's the um, map they give you with the game, with the old Spheres of Influence. Yeah, isn't that neat? <laughs> and certainly convenient. Hello, RPG. So as we can see, the Spothy have somehow managed to slave shield themselves. <laughs> that sign hanging out front. Report from surface. Captain, this is Lieutenant Robinson, sir. 
We've located an alien artifact down here. Perhaps more importantly, we have found something which I think may explain what happened to the Spathi. And I don't think you're going to like it. We were investigating a large blue machine when Officer Talbo discovered a message glued to the side of the device, sir. It's a note from the Spathi High Council. I'll read it to you. Dear Hunams, how are you? We are fine. However, can we thank you for letting us study your planet Earth's slave shield? Admittedly, it took us some time to replicate the technology ourselves, but we are simply delighted with the results. Yes sir, we sure love the idea of putting an impenetrable shield around our planet. Now all those evil monsters that we're just about to attack won't be able to eat us. Thanks. I guess this means we won't be able to send you any more starship captains. Sorry. Well, they want to turn on the shield about now, so we've got to get going. I'm sure we'll never ever talk with you again. So goodbye and thanks again. Your friends, the Spathi Ruling Council. P.S. This machine is the super powerful hyperwave caster that the Umgat used to trick us into believing that the Grand Master Planet Eaters were coming to destroy Spathiwa. We thought maybe you'd like to have it. End of transmission. Well, that's a very important item. Oh boy. This is one of those systems, isn't it? Well, I hope not. So, how's everyone doing? hot down there. Okay, that may have been putting it nicely. I do not want to be there. I'm gonna load. I should just avoid anything hot from now on.
Oh, okay. This is Pro 2418-B on a peaceful mission. Behavior follows dictated priority, replication, data gathering, contacting alien life, forms in peaceful manner, priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. don't have a good strategy for them. Kind of wish I had an earthen cruiser that would be better suited for that. But unfortunately I let mine get blown away really early in the game. Okay, we're gonna go a bit deeper into space. And this time I saved in advance, so... Hostile and seek to establish friendly relations with your species. Replication status: eight replications. Next replication: eighty-five percent complete. Estimated replication since departure from point of origin: five hundred eighty-three replications. Estimated replications projected one year from this date: fourteen thousand seven hundred eighty-four replications. Estimated replications projected five years from this date: forty-five million seven hundred eighty-six thousand four hundred twelve replications. Oh, just that many? New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. Say if we fall would be best, but I just think it's a death wish.
Although I did get one head in, so there's that. Yeah, I don't think this is really working. Whew. Okay then. Moving right along. Thank you for the follow. Okay, let's take a look around Delta City. Um, this place looks fine. Some gold. Maybe some platinum. It is funny that gold is worth so much in the future. I mean, I don't think it's even doing so well in the present, is it? Okay, I got 11 Kryptons. I'm not sure if any of them is the primary Krypton, but... <laughs> ah, I didn't even see that earthquake. That one's on me. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. But it's not called my rare stream for nothing. <laughs> anyway, it's nice to see you. Oopsie.
Yeah, well, if you want to know about the rare occasions where I do stream, we do have a Discord link down below the video. And that is where we um, do stream announcements as well as a lot of casual chatter. Give me a moment. Just a random gas giant. Not much use there. Oh, lots of bio signs. Let's go down here and shoot some stuff. Malnarae are going to be so happy with me when they see me. But we haven't run into one for a while. I guess partially because I've actually been careful about my fuel. I definitely believe that, and personally I'm planning on grabbing it. You probably remember me streaming Necrodancer quite some time back. Hey, I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I don't like Discord myself, but it's kind of a but thou must in this day and age. Like, they've managed to accomplish pretty great things, but I just don't really like the interface and how difficult multitasking is and, well, more stuff than just that, but that's the big stuff. And when I was still using an old computer with way outdated hardware, that thing was just eating way too much resources. But that's my personal opinion. And still, it cannot be overstated. They've really done a lot for chatting regardless. For gamers, anyway. <laughs> uh, can we maybe not talk about this? Like, that's kind of loaded. 
Thanks for understanding. glad that all of you were able to join me today. It is nice to have all of you around. All of you are beautiful people. Look, if you don't think you're beautiful, I will make you beautiful by force. Nah, but you're really good. Mm. Mm. Yes, Fuifo lives. And I'm having a pretty good resource run. I have four bays now, so I can carry a fair amount of resources. I really like Necrodancer too, that's why I've streamed it before. signs. This place looks a little dangerous, so I'm going to save first. Flowers. It's rhododendrons. Proto. Oh, I didn't know you had your own type of flower. fan of music games myself, just for the record. My favorite music game is pop and music, the whole series, although some specific ones like Toon Street sort of stood out than, more than others. I missed one, but it was a gray, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm doing well. My throat's a little raw, as you can probably tell, but other than that, everything's good. I also use beat pop. I mean, it's just more accurate. Or makes it easier to be accurate, I guess. The one thing I can never use is Kara Pop because I use lot. <laughs> so it's like, if I turned that on it would look almost exactly the same for both of them. <laughs> 
Here we have more gold, or platinum, or silver, you know, valuable metals. There's some gold. You see, Frodo is obsessed with gold, so... There you go, JD. You and Roto have a lot in common. You should hook up. Wait, what? This looks a little dangerous. I'm not sure. Ow. Ow. Lightning is a jerk. That's why I never played Lightning Returns. Entertaining timing, to say the least. It's funny when things just kind of line up like that. would have been shark instead of sharp if we lived in the Bojack Horseman universe. And that lightning really didn't like me. I suppose in cases like that, something is better than nothing. I used to be a fan translator myself, for anybody who doesn't know. That's actually how I broke into the game industry. I got hired for my work, and my fan translations became official. Well, a couple of them.
cargo holds are getting decently full. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, purpose really is one of the most important things when it comes to learning a language, actually. Like, that's a very important point. Um, like, if you don't have a really good reason for learning a language, it's not gonna stick. Uh, that's bad, 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 bad. That is not worth it. Okay, a lot of life signs here. Some bad weather. Oh boy. This could be ugly. Oh, slimes. This must be the other roto planet. He stores all of his flowers in one planet and all of his slimes on another. Crew's getting ugly. If you sent a message, Roto, it wasn't even picked up by Twitch, like, at all. Oh boy, I think it's time to head back. And hopefully along the way I don't get ambushed.
Oh boy. It's probably a probe that is chasing me down. Fingers crossed, we're almost there. Phew. And we're okay. I'm at your disposal, Captain. Not too much today, Captain. I hope you have better luck next time. Not much? I brought like 7,000... Farewell, Captain. Oh dear. Some people are never satisfied. Now this is a decent yep, yep. situation. The analysis reads as follows. Subject hyperwave broadcaster. Umga design. Data. This unit is capable of generating extremely intense hyperwave transmissions, though it is otherwise similar to our own casters. Summary. This thing would be great for practical jokes. She could scream boo from an orc cloud to scare the pants or whatever off of everyone in the system. If you used it in hyperspace, there's no telling who might hear you and come running. That's the end of our scientist's report. Goodbye, Captain. a point of where we need to go next because I worry about like how much time might be left. FIFO is fine. FIFO is absolutely fine. So don't worry too much. a lot of fuel. Of course it won't matter if it works out. Ah. 
Ha, can't catch me. Although they really don't want to stop trying, it seems. Just do one little thing here. Okay, the game can just close, that works too. Because I want to turn on the remixes for a moment. It always requires me to reacquire the window for some reason. Oh boy, they're still coming. We wish to learn more about you. Please transmit data. This is Pro2418-B. We are on a peaceful mission of exploration. Priority override. New behavior dictated. Must grave target into component materials. I forgot to put crew in that thing. Come on then, Freefall. No idea what's been going on with the chat, but it's not on my end in any case. Oh 
not another one. Hello, my little one. I am so pleased to see you. You have done well for yourself. It is gratifying. when it seemed that there was no longer any threat to our Earthlings. I am pleased to see that you, from outside the Slave Shield, survived. You seem therapy. We are many places at many times. This place is an easy place. One of the ten easy places. At different times, we explore different easy places. That is our way. Oh, I can see from the look in your eyes that I have confused you. I am silly. Please disregard my words. You are curious. That is a promising quality. How can I describe our relation to humans? Never doubt our motives, Captain. Your well-being is a paramount concern to every argument. Surely you know that it was the day after humanity joined the Alliance of Three Stars that we appeared in the open for the first time. This was no coincidence. We wanted to protect you. Once we saw that you were well safe, we decided to tend to other business for a short while. Believe me, Captain, we have known each other for a very long time. You might even say that we knew the first. Seek to trap Moon, but they dark and leap. You cannot trap Moon. Do not even try. I do not think you can even touch them. You are not quite solid enough. Why we let them go? Of course. Moon do not like to be confined. Captain, these things we talk about, they are unimportant to you. They are as dreams. Our words should address your universe, not ours. With ships and weapons, blood and bones, no. Too many shipmates were forcibly discorporated in the last conflict. Our cooperation is not necessary. You are the focus. However, knowledge transcends reality parameters, and this we can share with you. An example, to discover the nature of the red probes, see creatures who inhabit a world with no surface. Farewell, child. Now we wait a little bit longer. What was it, the 15th? The 17th? It's somewhere around there. 17th then, probably. As you can see, we are now in quasi-space. Okay game, I'm trying to chart a course here.
Aha! Our clever ward has found our nook in time. You are the first brave human. No others have made the trip. This is our home world, Falealorophily, nestled safe in this true space eddy. The portal you pass through is a rarity, a natural point of interdimensional fatigue. We use these phenomena to speed our transit through the realities. We are wondering, have you met with the Ungar recently? We entrusted an injured talking pet into their care, and we were curious about its progress. dimensional fatigue rays. As a sign of our long-standing relationship with your species, we would happily fit your vessel with a portal spotter of its own. But your ship is so massive, our units would be ineffective. However, we suspect you may find a sufficiently powerful warp pod to keep a in a portal spotter in the earth of the Earth core Trina, on the seventh world at Alpha Bobonis. Bring them for your vessel. Certainly, as we would be allowing you to but on Alpha Pavonis 7, but on Al Alpha Pavonis 7. Forgive us if we forget the importance you attach to such events as this. Our context is infinitely broader than yours in scope, both in space and time. Nevertheless, to please you, I shall try to recall. Yes, now I remember. Here is the sequence. The Urquhorn fleets have moved through your solar system, and you are defeated. Your people make the choice not to fight with and for the Urquhorn. A shield is cast about your world. Your people are now safe. This makes us happy. The Armada departs your star system and moves toward the remaining Alliance members. Ourselves, the Silene, the Yehut, and their adopted Shofixti. The Yehut and Shofixti withdraw to Delta Gorna, but they do not permit the Silene to follow. We are content with the flow of events and leave the area to return here. From our perspective, this sequence of events ends here. Self-annihilation circuits to prevent other species from learning the Urquhorn's technological secret. In this case, however, these circuits must have failed. The Dreadnought did not disintegrate on impact. We landed to explore the wreckage and were amazed to find a survivor, a talking pet. As you may know, the Urquhorn used these non-sentient creatures for the task of interspecies translation. A task the Urquhorn find ultimately demeaning. The talking pet was severely injured, and we did what we could for the poor creature. But it grew clear that without superior measures, the talking pet would die. We turned to the Ulga, whom we have known for many centuries. Their bioscience skills are far superior to our own. The Ulga promised to do what they could to let us know how the pet fared. We have not heard from the Ulga since. Perhaps, if you are traveling through their stars, you can ask them to us. Soon after the Urquan defeated the Yeha and imprisoned the Cyrene and Beetlejuice, their siblings arrived to initiate the doctrinal conflict. This battle continues as we speak. You desire honesty. It is given. 
We have visited your world for many thousands of years into your species past. We have changed things, made modifications. Our motives are multiple, our desires complex. Part of what we do on Earth is for your own protection. There are parasites, creatures who dwell beyond. They have names, but you do not know them. They would like to find you, but they are blind to your presence, unless you show yourselves. The androsynths showed themselves, and something noticed them. There are no more androsynths now, only ores. No, in a way, ignorance is your armor, your best protection. They cannot see you now, they cannot smell you. Much of our work with your people involved making you invisible, changing your smell. If I tell you more, you will look where you could never look before. And while you are looking, you can and will be seen. You do not want to be seen. Goodbye, clever child. Yeah, not wanting to be seen is basically how I feel every day. I'm sure a lot of you feel that way. Not all of you, but a lot of you. situation is not great, but if I do all of this right, it won't be a problem. There's something I want to take care of up here, though. Anybody who's played this game knows exactly what it is. I know this location by heart as a result of it. We are the Slylandro. I am content to hover, a Slylandro speaker. Your presence here fills us with excitement. We have gotten so few visitors over these many drawn. We hope you can stay to talk with us for a time. Oh my! I forgot! You creatures see in the visual range and can see our, well, our, uh, well, uh, we can't see them. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what I mean to say is, uh, they are, well, what well, means them when the male and the female, uh, <clears throat> well, look, I'd rather if you didn't ask about them, okay? Especially not in front of Soul and Plummet, she's shy. This is terribly exciting! We will be happy to tell you about ourselves if you will please, please do the same. You see, we Slylandro have been extremely interested in learning about the galaxy, but our physique makes us incapable of leaving our gas giant home. Therefore, we are totally reliant on our infrequent visitors to keep us informed about events outside this planetary system. And visitors usually only show up every few drawings. We hope that our newly deployed exploration probe fleet will not only gather information for us, but inform other races of our presence here as well. You know, it's funny. We hadn't heard from the outside galaxy in a whole genre. And then, the Melmo may come by and sell us a probe. And just a few hundred locations later, you show up. Oh, and the probes? Right! Well, like we said just a short time ago, a race called the Melnomay stopped by. 
They said they had acquired some information revealing our existence, and they wanted to study us if we didn't mind. In fact, the Melnomay said they would pay us for the right to do so. I guess they are biology nuts or something. Anyway, in exchange for our information, they gave us a probe vessel. work how I hoped. I was trying to reduce the fan noise. a remote exploration probe. It would roam the galaxy gathering information and contacting alien races, and when it had filled its data storage units, it would return here and reveal to us everything it had learned. It was sent on a 500 rotation mission to seek out new life and new civilizations to boldly go where no catalog item 2418 remote self-replicating robot explorer probe had gone before. Well, we're not hardware people, so we only know the theory. What happens is that while the probe is exploring space, whenever it's not doing something more important, it hunts for asteroids and similar space junk, zaps it into its component parts, absorbs the debris, and when it has it manufactures a perfect replica of itself. So even though we only bought one probe, by now there should be hundreds of probes, maybe even thousands. Our probes do not attack. They have only defensive capabilities. Offensive behavior is not part of the instructions we programmed into the probe. To do so would be reprehensible. Sure, what would you like to know? That behavior was hard-coded by the Mel Norme. We couldn't mess with it. Essentially, the probe will only fire its weapons if it has been attacked and cannot communicate with the attacker. No, the probe is armed with a battery of missiles. It doesn't use its electrical discharge device in combat. That's impossible! It's inconceivable! The electrical discharge device is used only for breaking down raw replication materials into their component compounds for easy gathering. I'd be glad to. You see, the probe has the capability to seek out raw materials, process the raw materials into component compounds, collect the compounds, and then when it has a sufficient supply, it can build a duplicate of itself. We decided that since we had only one probe, we should change the replication priority and crank it up so that there would be more probes sooner. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Well, the factory setting was two. In between movement at one and analyze data at three. I told Joyce Lifting to set it a bit higher. Let me ask him what he said it to. Oh, 
my! That was a bit extreme, wasn't it? Joyce Licking told me he changed it to 999, the highest setting on the dial. Sure, it was a difficult task for us, since we'd never done anything like that before. But for the most part, we just adjusted his standard program, which went something like scan for targets as defined in target list. If no current target, then select new target from the current targets list using specified priorities. If current position is at current target, then set current behavior to new behavior based on behavior priority settings. Perform current behavior. Okay, that's the basic program. I said it was simple. And here are the tables used by the program. Target list with associated target priority. Space vessel, five. Transmission source, four. Astronomical anomaly, three. Planet bearing life signature, two. Raw replication materials, one. Probe behaviors with assigned priorities. Communicate, five. Record data, four. Analyze data, three. Seek replication materials, 999. Move to current target, one. That's it. I'm pretty sure the way it works is that every time a behavior is completed or interrupted, the program selects a new behavior based on the defined behavior target priorities and what kind of target is currently selected. I think a really high priority would cause a probe to focus its attention on that behavior. No, it cannot. It is not programmed for hostile behavior. What is your reasoning? The probe seeks raw materials and processes them in preparation for replication. Spaceships are the probe's highest priority because we want more than anything to make friendly contact with alien races. The answer is simple. It would spend more of its time seeking raw materials for its replication process. So what? I don't see what you are getting at, but I'll play along with you. Like I said, alien ships are the top priority target. Once a probe scanned a ship, it would instantly move toward it. Then, when it got to the ship, it would initiate communication automatically. When communications were terminated, a new behavior would be selected and... Uh-oh! A new behavior would be selected. And since the replication setting was set to maximum, the probe wouldn't get time to pick a new target. It would use the current target, the ship, for raw replication materials. It would process the ship, break it into component compounds with electrical discharges. Oh no! What have we done? Traveler, you must tell us what we can do! How can we stop the probes from destroying all life in the galaxy? Why yes, there is! You're a genius, Traveler! Why didn't we remember that? Oh, there's a problem, though. How are we going to transmit the code? Well, while we ponder that problem, at least we can give you the code sequence. That way, if you run into a probe, you can destroy it without getting shot on. Hello, Millie. Years? Oh, you mean drawn. Well, let's see. There was the Melno Man just a few rotations back. Then we go all the way back over three draw ago to the Earth one and the other of you guys. The Yuli and the Draw, I think. Hmm. Let me remember. That was a long, long time ago. I was only a nymph then. Oh yes, that's it. The Sentient Milieu was a cooperative association of sentient alien species. The Yuli, the Draw, 
the Taelo, the Mailman, the Foz, and the Iroquois, who lived across a wide section of the galaxy. They talked with us fairly frequently for almost half a drawing. Then suddenly, the visit stopped, and we haven't heard from them since. Yes, there was another race, a highly sophisticated species of shaggy giants who made repeated trips to our world over a period of several drawn. They even installed a broadcasting satellite in orbit around our world, which let us talk with them whenever we wanted. They were called the... the... I'm sorry, I can't remember their names. It was a long, long time ago. I wish I knew more of the information you seek, Traveler. But we last saw the Shaggy Ones just over 39 drawn ago, and very little from that era has remained intact in our history chance. Hold on a minute. Let me consult with associates Joyce Lifting and Salt Plunk. Joyce Lifting, who has a better memory than I, recalls that the Shaggy Ones were described as being worried. They were always hurrying from place to place, seeking knowledge as though they were in a desperate search for some important secret, some answer to a question that they never shared with us. Song Plummet remembers that the last time the Shaggy Ones visited our world, they came aboard a great circular starship, one even larger than your own. They had discovered their answer and were leaving to go somewhere, and they didn't tell us exactly where somewhere was. I have no idea, honestly. No, I have told you. One moment, Joyce Lifting transmits. Joyce Lifting has remembered something else, though it does not relate to the Shaggy One's question, answer, or departure destination. What my associate communicates is the description of a set of ten worlds, unlike all others. The Shaggy Ones either discovered these planets, or, this is Garble, assembled them? We were told the planets were, again, this is confusing, organized in some pattern which in some way alluded to the Shaggy Ones ultimate fate. One of the worlds was described as orbiting one of a pair of blue stars not far from here. Another of these worlds circled a large white sun. That is all we can remember. The drawing is our primary unit of time. It lasts for an interval equivalent to four million rotations of our planet. A drawing is subdivided into 2,000 dronasa. Now please, our turn. Will you tell us about yourselves? Yes, that seems to be the pattern. Just about everyone who comes by here says they developed on a world a lot like that. As far as we know, we're the only sentient species who's ever evolved in the atmosphere of a gas giant. Of course, from what we know, most travelers like yourselves don't have much interest in gas giants. So maybe there are others like Gus Thylandro out there somewhere. Check out a planet orbiting a blue star not too far from here. I think there is another blue star right next to it. We can't describe exactly where it is, but the people who told us about it, the Urquan, I think, said that it was one of the rarest worlds in space, and that as far as they knew, there were only ten of these planets in this part of the galaxy. That must be great, to leave your planet and home the stars. You don't know how monotonous living on a gas giant for three or four drawn can be. Clouds, clouds, clouds. Wind, lightning, clouds, clouds, clouds. That's it. We know a lot about clouds. If you've got any cloud questions, ask us. We have over 800 different symbolic references just to describe them. Most of the time, when we aren't eating, we hover around and talk about what the clouds look like. Of course, the only things we know about are clouds, food, and other Slylandro. So generally, that's what we think the clouds look like. The Urquan? 
The long brownish guys from the milieu with all the eyes and arms? They used to come visit us regularly about three drawings ago. They told us about all the interesting things they found from their scouting missions. They were really nice. What do you find with them? But the Urquhart were such good guys. They had lots of interesting things to tell us about, and they never got impatient with our questions. Hmm. Well, I guess a lot can happen to a species in 3 drawn, like turning green and evil. <laughs> like turning green and evil. Hmm. Okay, but please, can we talk about you some more later? Great. Now you've done it. Just look at Soul and Plummet. You've embarrassed her so badly that she can't even regulate her powers. That's okay. Actually, your explicit questions have put Soul and Plummet in an unusual and intriguing mood. More fully when this conversation is over. Goodbye, human fluid sack. That's the most flattering way I've ever been described as a fluid sack. I will be back shortly. about that, but I return. Oh, that looks inhospitable. over here. Okay, that's a little more like it.
sort of. They're generated from a seed, but the seed does not change between games. Loading my game. Quiet, I'm just sucking on a cough drop. spaceship be too fast? The answer may surprise you.
these things can be such a tr such a troublesome. Uh, they're a pain to hunt. doing so well. That was a bit of a pain. Oh, that's good. I was a little worried about that. Not severely or anything, but... Oh, not the bees. Chicken? Just... just chicken?
are you using worth the fuel? Pretty soon we'll be leaving the Beta Corgi system. Earthquakes here. But earthquakes are the least of the dangers. <clears throat> I say that and then that happens. <clears throat> that system, but let's see, the rainbow world I guess would be down here in one of these two. And the crashed ship that I need. I guess that would be um, Alpha Pavanus, right. Alpha Pavanus 6, 7? So I need to get this stuff and then get back to the portal. It might get a little close. No, I mean might, it will. Chris. If the friendly neighborhood Melner may show up, it won't be an issue. ship is so fast now that I keep having trouble controlling it. Which is a good problem to have. signs here, but there's some resources. As dangerous planets go, this one's one of the tamer ones. <coughs> As well, like I was saying, I couldn't remember which one it was. So over here then. on fire. Report from surface. 
Captain, we've located the wreck of the Nurkhan Dreadnought. The fact that there is anything but a hole in the ground indicates that the vehicle had some engine power left to soften its crash. Most of the Dreadnought is just so much alien junk. We've made whole... We've made hollows of everything, but I don't think it will be of much use to anyone but those egghead xenotechs back at the base. We have found one piece of equipment, which is relatively intact. It is a huge hyperspace warp pod. The starboard unit, I think. We will bring it aboard. End of report. This is not a pretty situation, though. I'm not going to be able to get to the port <laughs> portal without um, Ari Lu help. Ari Lu, I meant Melnore. Sorry, sometimes my brain just. Guys. It's really hot on this one. Well, not exceptionally hot, but really hot. Mm. Certainly enough that I don't want to stay there, but there's so much stuff there, it's worth it. Ugh. Okay, that was... that's entirely on me. Guys are ready to run out of fuel. Because we're gonna run out of fuel. Is that an Ari loop? Ah, our human friend. Please let us chat a while. It has been so many years since I last visited your Earth. So long since I glided across your open fields under the light of a full moon. Tell me of Earth. Tell me of what I am. Oh, I forget myself. How silly. You were born on the distant world moons are vault. I have visited there much more recently. You have painted our pictures on cave walls, erected standing stones, and pyramids for us. You have wondered at our signs to each other in your wheat fields, and written books about our more personal endeavors, when we allowed you to recall our examinations. We have a history together, Captain, and you have come a long way. But I must tread carefully. You are not ready for everything, and I fear that you would not understand what was best for you. The Micon change and reform worlds with their deep children. These changes affect others, unfortunately. The fate of your world and your heart relate to these matters. Farewell, child. We're gonna be here for a while, and that sucks, given everything. You know, the whole time limit and all. Hello, my clever child. You your instinct. I could go to a nearby star system, but it's better to just wait and use the fuel I have. 
Last night as you slept, I touched your face and you smiled. But now you frown. A pity. Smiling is healthier. Farewell, child. On the bright side, this will save a lot of travel time in the future, which is why I came here in the first place. Please, please, you're taking my fuel. Or did we? Farewell, child. Rename my ship. There. Hello, good to see you. of sharing the easy way with you excites us. If you have found the Urquan Warp Pod, this prospect can be made a reality. What a surprise! As we have always said, humans are a most resourceful and clever species. We are so proud of you, but don't worry that you shall have to wait. We are prepared. Even now, our technical personnel are equipping your ship with a custom version of our portal spotter device. The device is usable only in hyperspace. Whenever it is activated, the spotter will focus several interdimensional fatigue beams adjacent to your vessel, opening a temporary hole into quasi-space. Move quickly through the portal. After your ship has passed into quasi-space, you can choose any of the nearby portals which lead back to hyperspace, thus saving you needless transit time. Be keenly aware of this fact. The spotter requires a great deal of energy to function. We estimate that each time you use the device, it will consume 10 of your fuel units. Goodbye, clever child. Pretty sure that's the right portal. Either way, I don't really have enough fuel to make it back to Seoul. Of course, my cargo bays are pretty light too. It's not the best situation. Not the best. Oh, I will just barely make it.
here we are. Oops. Hello, Captain. I know you're busy, but I've got some news. Good news, Captain. With no announcement, a small fleet of Ari Lu Lolly Lay popped into space adjacent to our star base, scaring the hell out of the deep raider operator. But right now, I could kiss every one of those pale little weirdos because they gave us three skip vessels. Not too much today, Captain. I hope you have better luck next time. Return soon, Captain. Okay, so in any case, we have much more access to the galaxy now. Of course, part of the problem is now I have to plan everything around the fact that I have the Pause the space spawner. Um. Pretty sure this is the right planet. The names just, you know, end up standing out. Alright, I can't actually go there yet. I have to deal with... What's his face first? Also, are they? They seem fine. Yeah. Whereas Spothy are, of course, gone, as we already knew. I'll just go into a random portal and come what may. Hmm. So maybe this one? Okay then. I forgot to recrew, but that's okay, I don't really need crew that badly. This place is great. Right, I don't have a lander. I'm a dummy. Apparently. Okay then. I will have to get a lander. Because I'm a dummy. These things happen. So instead, I'll just stay kind of close for a bit. I 
checked Rigel already, but... There's no harm in being sure. Attention, Starship. We are the Dark Pot Pit. Make no hostile actions. We come in peace and with goodwill. But if you make one false move, you're a vapor. Don't worry. My companion is just a bit nervous. No, I'm not. And argumentative. No, I'm not. We are a scout vessel detached from our home world. We have traveled far through hostile, uncharted space to find you. We hail from the Green Dwarf Star at coordinate there far. Hurry up! Aha! Bahoy! Oops! Not very helpful. In their coordinate system. Oh, uh, <clears throat> coordinates 400.0 by 543.7. Who is? No, she is. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Hi. We've been through this a billion times. That doesn't change anything. You're the fox. Well, Captain, as you can see, this is a point of some contention. Fox! Hooray! Then we finally found our saviors. Maybe. At last, our search is over. It is just as the great crystal ones promised. They look sneaky. I think they're lying. Quiet, fool. Can't you see our nightmare is over? This ship is from the Great Crystal One's Fable Alliance. The Alliance of Three Stars. Maybe. Our planets are under attack from an invading horde. We do not know who they are or why they are here. We are being blown to bits. Fleets of alien ships appear out of nowhere, then unleash terrible destructive energy. Fortunately, they release these energies on each other. Unfortunately, they save a combat near strong gravity well. Their stray shots regularly strike the surface of our planet, often with tragic results. Fortunately, they have never found our homeworld, only our colony planet. Unfortunately, all of our colonies have perished as a consequence. In our ancient past, four species evolved intelligence on our homeworld. Simultaneously. They were the Zox, the Fox, the Pit, and the Zabranky. We three, the Zox, Fox, and Pit, evolved in such a way as to acquire sustenance from many sources. From airborne dull plankton, solar and ambient energy, and from rocky fungal clingers. Our favorite. The Zabranki also consumed a variety of food, namely the Zox, the Fox, and the Pit. To survive the predations of the Zabranki, we banded together, annihilated the Zabranki, and formed the cooperative union you now encounter. We are a relatively peaceful group of species. Unless we're angry. So, we find ourselves in need of help. We only need a little because of our desperate situation. Desperate is too strong a word. I think troublesome is more like it. Some of the vessels are huge green battleships which launch wave after wave of small fighters. The other ships are black in space and their hulls are carved with strange alien writing. In combat, the two ships seem evenly matched. One fires blasts of fusion energy, while the other launches spinning projectiles. They're both pretty deadly. These are the words we have prayed for. Hey! This trip's not a waste after all! More than anything, we seek an ally to help us survive in this hostile universe. We're having some problems of that general nature. But we are only emissaries. We must meet with our leaders. They are wiser, more powerful beings. They look just like us, though. Fly to the star called Alpha Tucane. The planet closest to the sun is our home. 
and if possible, hurry. All the way over there? I mean, it's actually not that big of a deal anymore. About 40 fuel. being out this way is kind of dangerous. I will technically be entering Urquan space, I'm pretty sure. At this point, it would be much nicer to encounter a Melnorm. Melnorme, whatever. <laughs> My throat's feeling a little bit better, so that's good. Just a little, though. Let's not go there. This place looks dicey, but it's got some nice stuff. Of course, as we know, the lightning can at any time just go screw you in particular. Thank you. 
call, though. Certainly can't complain. It is the alien from the Tangessa's Alliance. Just look at those weapon pods on his ship. We hope that during this visit, we can make clear to your species the benefits of a mutual assistance pact. But we're also armed to the teeth, so don't try stealing our atmosphere or anything sneaky like that. We had a close call last week. One of those black ships was snooping around the system. But before it got to our world, some of the green ships warped in, destroyed the black vessel, and then left immediately. We got lucky. No, we have nothing new to report. Nope, not a thing. How wonderful. We accept. Hooray! How marvelous. Yeehaw! Captain, we are delighted that your people have made this choice. Now we won't get slaughtered. In exchange for our cooperation helping you with captains and ship design, all that we ask for is your protection. So we don't get slaughtered. We, we shall, shall begin, begin fulfilling our commitment at once. We will transport officers and our stinger design to your base immediately. Why, heck! Maybe I'll even make the trip to your planet. I'd make a good starship, Captain. Captain, I'm pretty darn mean in a fight. And there ain't nobody better than me with a thrusting stinger tongue attack. Sure, what do you want to know? Just ask away. Ah, cultural exchange. A good idea. Yeah, let's tell him about Frungy. Be quiet, you fool. He asks a serious question. He doesn't want to know about Frungie. How do you know? What makes you so smart? You never even asked him if he wants to know about Frungie. Why, I bet right now he's wondering, what is this wonderful sport, Frungie? How is it played? What kind of equipment do you need to play Frungie? And I wonder who's ahead in the Frungie Championship. Ah, would you shut up about Frungie? If you say another word about that... Stupid game. I'm going to lose control and blow a cloud of spores at you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Don't blow your sack. I won't mention Frungy again. I promise. Well, Captain, as you can probably see, our culture's predominant trait, its greatest strength and weakness, is the diverse interactions between dot, spot, and fish. Frungy, Frungy, Frungy! Not much, to tell the truth. This space exploration stuff is, uh, kind of new to us. Besides the green alien ships, which have only tried to kill us, and the black alien ships, which have actually been quite successful at killing us. The only other starships we have encountered are strange, tumbling red probes, which profess to be on a peaceful mission. But then attack like slavering the Brankies. We believe that the probes are actually robotic scouts which have suffered some kind of malfunction resulting in their aberrant behavior. And what's worse, they are multiplying. Yes, that's true. The probes seem to be replicating at a geometric rate. Hey, that means if there was only one last week, then next month, uh, wait a minute, let me calculate. Uh, uh, that means next month there'll be a whole mess of those things. By backtracing the probe's course path, we have been able to calculate that the source of the probes is somewhere on a direct line that includes our star and Epsilon Muscade. Go get him, Captain! The stinger is the key of our technological class. It's totally awesome! These vessels are cheap to build and can be quite effective in short-range combat. They turn on a... 
Anna, well, a small round thing that's real small. Remember, though, against most ships, the Stinger must close distance immediately and give unrelenting tongue attacks until either the enemy or the Stinger are destroyed. Yeah, the tonguing is the best part. Nope. Not a word. Our past? Quite a broad topic for this short conversation, but we'll share a key piece of our history with you. After we killed off the last of Brunch, we faced an interesting question. Should we proceed and establish a culture which would advance in art, technology, and social sophistication? Or should we just go back into the forest and kick back and enjoy ourselves, knowing that as a blanket wasn't going to jump out of the bush and eat us? Well, we did go back into the forest. We stayed there for about 5,000 years and had a great time. Then, one stormy day, a zock, a fox, and a pig were walking up a steep path looking for something good to eat when a bolt of lightning struck nearby. With a huge flash of light, the bolt of energy carved a strangely shaped chunk of granite out of a cliff. It was a disc with a hole in the middle. As the rock began to roll down the hill, for the three terrified beings, some dry grass got caught in its hole. And since the rock was still hot, the grass caught on fire. When the rock finally got to the dock, the fox and the pet, they simultaneously discovered the wheel, fire, and religion, thus catapulting them on the road of progress. Which has led us to this day, Captain. Oh, how did the flaming wheel give religion to our culture, you ask? I will explain. You see, when it got to the threesome, the flaming wheel was going at a pretty good clip, and it ran smack into the rock, killing him. The spot and the pit felt so bad. They really liked that sock, that they decided the sock hadn't really died when the wheel flattened him. He had just gone to a better place. Presumably one without lethal flaming wheels. <laughs> Anything else? Goodbye, Captain. See ya! That is certainly one way for a civilization to advance rapidly. I'm also sorry about the audio ducking. I don't honestly know what's going on with it exactly. It's just being kind of moody, I guess. Yeah, it is, but even if I eliminate all background noise, it'll still randomly pick up loud noises that aren't there. It's one of those situations. Either way, I hope it's not too distracting. the battle fares well, Captain. I know you're busy, but I've got some news. It would appear your diplomatic efforts have struck gold, Captain. We've been contacted by a race called the Zok Fatik, who wish to fulfill their part of the unification, something you have arranged with them, I gather. They have sent us specifications for the Stinger-class attack vessels, as well as a large number of Zok Fatik commanding officers. You're doing a fine job, Captain. Also, We've detected a minute but measurable disturbance in the inner space program, true space coordinate 100 by 50. Our scientists speculate that this disturbance may be caused by many thousands of hyperwarp penetrations, all in phase, as though a huge fleet of ships were on the move.
Excellent work, Captain. Okay, it's not an amazing amount of minerals, but... Just make a couple adjustments again. <laughs> okay, this should be a bit better, probably. Full capacity. Hmm. Crew, right. And I will be right back. Sorry about that, as always. There we go. Hmm. Got good fuel. Got a full complement of crew. Need to go somewhere far out there. Start making more appreciable progress. Choose arbitrarily. Oh. Oh. Um, well. Hmm.
I like how there's no star around for miles, basically. It's not so much that it's reversed as the way it links up doesn't really correspond to real space. Like at all, really. Well, not much here. blue star there. I generally would consider that to be a good sign, I think. <sighs> the Elras have noticed I'm here. Okay, not that planet. This one is equally dangerous. Not great either. Anything with high fire is just bad. Well, high temperature, but you know. It becomes fire. It makes fire. Nasty. Let's see if I can grab this. Nope. Tons of fire. <laughs> and there went my lander. That's what I got. Oops, not save. Load. <laughs> and now I know which portal not to take. about this one. Huh. I'm dropping near the Zokfot. It's not the worst place in the world, but it's not a great place either. It's just a place, a medium place. Hmm. 
think I can handle this. Crazy weasel? That's just bad luck. I'm gonna do that one again. It actually wasn't the lightning that got me, it was a big wave of earthquakes. This time the game crashed? It's an out of memory error. Believe me, it's certainly not my system's fault. I've got 64 gigs of RAM in this thing. be a big problem if not for all the tectonic activity. Mm. In fact, it's really not that big of a deal. Thank you. 
messing with the docking, don't mind me so much. Blah, 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 blah. Adjusting the ratio isn't really doing much. But in any case, I just want everything to be audible to some decent extent, so, you know. Hopefully this should be a little better, um, anyone? Also, I realized I was sitting in... Yeah. I don't want so much time to have passed, so I'll do this world again. aren't really that big of an issue to me, but it's a mix of that and the lightning that makes it nasty. Oh, I messed up. That one's entirely on me. Capricorni again. Sucks, but This planet sucks too, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. I don't really have any resources on hand at the moment.
You know, I should just say this planet sucks in day-to-day -day life. Like, I should find ways to use this. Because this planet sucks. Earth, I mean. Okay, we got some General Zoe's crystals. That's always good. Oh! Free money. I like this planet. And by this planet, I mean Beta Capricorni 2B. I know I save my game constantly, but I don't have to. Goo burger. Roto, does that sound delicious to you? Ooh. I think Thor got angry. Oh, silly me, it's the blue meter. It's so hard to see that thing. And I've never filled up on it until then. Until now. Um, so that was a good haul. Really wish I would run into a Melnerme. Anybody happen to remember where the Melnerme, like, always hangs out? Is it that simple?
guys. Had 50 pods this morning, Captain, and here you are. Now, what can we do for you today? What would you like to sell, Captain? The 510 units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earned you 1,020 credits. What would you like to sell, Captain? Your ship's log indicates that you discovered the whereabouts of two of the rainbow worlds, which so fascinate us. In exchange, we will give you 1,000 credits. What trade items would you like to buy today? The technology we are now offering includes specifications for constructing modifications to your planet landers, which will double their speed. Ah, yes, speed. An excellent choice for the relentless hunter and trade empowered as well. These modifications are simple enough to be put in place immediately. Your lander should be properly equipped in no time. The technology we are now offering includes details on how to add point defense laser systems to your flagship. These little babies are great for defense, but because of their limited range, they may not make a good offensive weapon. However, the more you build for your vessel, the more damage each laser strike will do. The technology we are now offering includes plans for building improvements to your planet landers which make them resistant to hostile alien life forms. All the enforcement procedures on your landers are complete. Now, provided your crew will stop putting their hands up the windows, they will be much better protected against hostile life forms. The technology we are now offering includes blueprints show how to increase your lander's cargo space to double its present volume. I hope this makes your resource gathering more cost-effective, Captain. The technology we are now offering includes blueprints, which show how to add double capacity fuel tanks. We hope that these improved tanks We'll make more module slots available on your flagship, which you can fill with other, more useful equipment. The technology we are now offering includes plans for improving the rate of fire on your lander's stun ray bolt beamer gun. After some wild game, hmm? Well, the changes we made should really make a difference. Unless, of course, that wiring went in backwards, in which case you won't be able to shoot at all, or take off, for that matter. Don't worry, Captain. We stand behind our work. If something goes wrong, just bring it back to us, and we'll fix it pronto. The technology we are now offering includes details for building modifications to your planet landers, which make them resistant to earthquakes. With the addition of these safety belts and heavy-duty shock absorbers, your lander occupants should be much safer when an untimely earthquake strikes. The job is complete. Your landers are ready. The technology we are now offering includes plans for adding auto-tracking modules, which improve the aim of all your weapons. You are preparing for a mighty battle, then? 
Well, let me give you some advice. You should consider using multiple tracking modules, since this will greatly improve your aim. However, never add more than three to your ship. Any more would be useless. The technology we are now offering includes plans for adding improvements to your planet landers, which make them resistant to inclement planet weather. A little superconductive spray paint and presto, your lander can sustain a direct hit by a lightning bolt without risking the passengers inside. Usually, since the job is so easy that a nymph could do it, I expect all your landers will be treated in less than an hour. The technology we are now offering is everything you need to know to assemble modifications to your planet landers, which make them resistant to planetary hotspots. With these new ablative plasma heat shields, your crew will be substantially safer on hot worlds. But like all our lander modifications, this protection is not perfect. So remain cautious. Since the changes to your landers are straightforward, your lander should be fitted with the heat shield by the time you return to your ship. The technology we are now offering with plans for building Hellbore Cannons, a weapon much more destructive than a simple blaster. Captain, just a suggestion. Hellbore Cannons are energy gulpers. So unless you want to have a long delay between shots, I would suggest you add dynamos or even Shiva furnaces to your ship. The technology we are now offering includes details on how to develop Shiva Furnace Modules, which generate energy for your combat batteries twice as fast as your standard dynamos. I am certain you will appreciate this new module, Captain. With it, you should be able to destroy and devastate twice as fast as before. Commander, that is the limit of the new technology we can offer you. If I may say so, you have been an excellent customer. Thank you. How wonderful, Captain. Twenty-five thousand of your years ago, there existed near this region of space an association of star-faring races called the Sentient Milieu. This group formed over several thousand years to mutually enrich their respective cultures to provide a safe crash for emerging sentient species and to afford themselves a degree of protection from external hostilities via military lines. Of the seven most active milieu members, the most famous race, and indeed, you know them well, Captain, were the Urquois. The Zakpatik are a friendly co-op of three alien species, all native to the same world. They are presently suffering severe collateral damage from the ritual combat between the Urquan and the Koran. Why, this is unfortunate for the Zakfatik. They have been forced to abandon many of their worlds. This close proximity to the inter urquan war will give them insights into the conflict, which will be of great use to you. In addition, the Zakfatik met the Chen Jesu early on in the war, and are eager to make allies who can protect them from their enemies. In case 
You are interested. The Zapfot Pick Homeworld is at coordinates 400.0 by 543.7, Planet One. The Urquan evolved on a harsh planet, orbiting a star outside this region of space. They were solitary predators, like your brain mantis captain, or holy man, who had a very limited set of social behaviors, most of which dealt with sex. Since they had to compete for survival against many physically superior species, the Earthquan involved intelligence and tool use in much the same way as your own species. The Urquan also learned to master their fierce territoriality to build a cooperative planetary culture. When the Urquan were discovered by the Dai, they had just begun exploring their solar system in crude atomic vehicles. Although the Urquan attacked what they thought to be an invader, the Taelo were patient. They explained the purpose of the sentient milieu and offered the Urquan membership. The Urquan recognized the benefits that such a system provided, and once more conquered the hunting beast within themselves to become cooperative, productive, Members of the Milky this lasted for several thousands of years. What else would you like to buy? Very well then. It has been a pleasure dealing with you, Captain. We look forward to your next visit. Okay, so that's... We got all of their technology. That's great. So now, while I can't be completely careless with my landers, I can certainly do more with them. What a blob planet. <sighs> yeah, I'm aware of how this works. In general, I know the game fairly well. Gas giants. <sighs> eh, not bad. Ugh, 
this place is not very worth it. But it's not as if it's really that much danger to me either, as long as I don't stand in a, an earthquake or something. Now this planet is worth it. Probably. So... I get all these upgrades and I'm looking at our earthquakes anyway. Funny how that goes. Certainly not as if they can get more salt. As you guys can see, a planet like this is no risk anymore as long as I just keep moving. What's dangerous is prolonged damage exposure, I should say. Seven tectonics. Well, that wouldn't have been a worry to me in the first place. There's sort of a pattern, after all, to how the earthquakes happen. Keys just don't move too often. <laughs> Yeah. 
if I know, right? It's like being in the last parts of a of an FTL run. machine tree. <laughs> Of course, anything I gather for the Melnerme is basically um, fuel fodder. Fuel fodder now. Fixie yet. I haven't gotten the maidens. I know where to go, I just, you know. Now would be the time to start looking into that, though. The upgraded lander and everything. Hall. Uh, actually, my pods are almost full. May as well just go back to Seoul. Space is definitely faster here.
Ah, yes. That means... Right. I'm gonna have to account for that pretty soon then. Sooner rather than later. So I guess I'm going to be paying the Vox Admiral a visit very shortly. Welcome back, Captain. Now that's money. Captain, can you do better next time? Oh, come on. <laughs> the analysis reads as follows. Subject, quasi-space portal spawner. Data, device is a hybrid of different alien technologies, including Ari Lu and Urquan elements. Our tests show that this device temporarily creates a weakness in the fabric between hyperspace and a different unidentified dimension. The energy cost of this process is extreme, and since the unit's power supply is self-contained, we cannot estimate how long it will remain functional. Summary, use of this device will permit a starship to make transit to a different dimension. The hazards and benefits of this process are impossible to gauge without field study. The next entry in the analysis is Subject Flylandro Probe Destruct Code Sequence. Data. This is a complex sequence of program instructions using an encryption sequence similar in some ways to the Rolling Fung algorithm. Summary. When a Flylandro probe approaches, open a hailing frequency, wait for a response, and then transmit the code. That's the end of our scientist report. I would say things are going pretty well here. Killed, Captain. start simple when it comes to these. travel might be best.
Sorry about that. Visitors, what a treat! I am Admiral Zex. Please, do not be frightened. Unlike the rest of my species, I enjoy humans. You may know me by my reputation, my leadership of Vox forces during the war with your lives. I assure you that this behavior, a sad necessity of those times, belies a much kinder, gentler being. Please, be welcome. We can get to know one another, expand our interspecies relationship. But wait, how silly of me. You aren't here for polite repartee. You have come for my show fixing ladies. Ah, such a good question. But you always were a bright species. I will explain. After the Great War, in which I played some small part, the Vox High Council, in recognition for my services, granted me this planet, so that I might pursue my hobby without disturbing the General Vox populace. I am a collector, you see. I have the finest menagerie of beautiful creatures in all space. Animals? <laughs> oh no, Captain. Not mere animals. My menagerie contains only the most beautiful creatures in the galaxy. Each of my children, as I like to call them, has a wonderful set of traits which make them unique and special. Especially to me. I have a complete variety of beasts from as far away as to Zion and Vader. No, this is not just some zoo. I have worked diligently for many years to craft my menage, to gradually improve it. Perhaps you can't tell, but I am rather proud of it. Alas, there is one creature, one gorgeous animal, which I do not yet possess. I would give almost anything for that creature.
what an interesting proposal. I never would have thought of such a wonderful idea myself. You are a genius, Captain. An answer to your question. Yes, I accept your offer. Deliver the creature to me, and I shall give you the show fixing maintenance. I will even provide you with a clue to finding the creature's native planet. My source for this information is an ancient wildlife handbook written millennia ago by some unknown alien author. The pertinent passage goes as follows. Demise. It basks in yellow light within the constellation Lynch 9. Translated Lynch not go to an approximately the long, thin creature who has swallowed the huge beast. I am afraid this is all that I know. I hope it is sufficient. Because I like humans, Captain, I respect and admire your species. I do not share the bigoted views of most of my people. The end game map in this version does have the constellations on it as an op optional mode. No, no, not all, Fox Captain. Most, but not all. It is true when the majority of my people view one of your species, they are forced to regurgitate. But there are those among us who have grown beyond such childishness to take a more liberal view. We, the few sophisticates, are not subject to our likes and dislikes are strictly based on personal preference. We see the beauty in the humans, the value in a long-term relationship. You are different, yes, but personally, I like difference. In fact, I adore it. Your physique is so wonderfully varied. Your multitudinous rigid appendages, your tiny double eyes, your varied skin coloration, and the delightful patchwork of hair covering only parts of your bodies, leaving other parts bare and smooth. Hmm, I value your species, Captain. I see you as just people, like us fox. have talked with my fox countrymen, haven't you? They are close-minded fools, bigoted in all ways. Call me what you wish, Captain. I choose to view myself as well simply open-minded, free to experience the full range of life's possibilities. The fox rules could not refuse my military genius, couldn't ignore the many victories I gave them, but they would not tolerate my behavior. Except my desires is natural. So they sent me out here, a hero's exile, where I will poison the minds of youth with my bizarre ideas and perverted lifestyle. <laughs> Bigoted fools. You see, Captain, we are not all that different, you and I. We are different from the majority of Fox, and so we in Fox eyes are both monsters. Goodbye, beautiful human. I hope we can meet someday as friends. Perhaps even more?
Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Huh, they've already been here? It's cleaned out. I guess I have been to this one. Everything left here just isn't so great. The beast would certainly be deadly if my lander wasn't fully upgraded, but it shouldn't be that bad with the fully upgraded landers. Of course, that's from memory, and my memories of the game are years old. Yeah, well, any creature is lethal if you sit still enough. A cat slowly pawing your face could, over millions of years, completely erode you into nothingness. Perhaps even less. Frodo, I wasn't talking about the game. Well, this is a fairly uncommonly known fact, but cats are actually immortal.
What am I seeing on the view screen? It's none other than the flattened old face of our friend the human. But, old ally, are you not knowing that we, the Yeha, are allied with the ur now? And your presence outside the slave shield and in an armed starship are clear violations of your oath of fealty. Whatever shall we do? It just isn't a right thing to kill you, human, but as a loyal member of my clan, I must obey the wishes of our queen. As much as my heart cries to aid ye valiant human, I cannot. Each of us is sworn first to our queen who has commanded us to treat ye as an enemy of the crown. Your words are flying in the face of the facts, human. We are no longer being your allies. But unlike the nobles of our homeworld, we of the starship clans are bereaved of this course of events. The Queen's decision to be joining the hierarchy pains us. Can't you see that you're killing me, human? The shame, the awful shame of it. What you say is true. We should be under the same wing, but damn your eyes. Our Queen has given the Urquan our allegiance, and there is nothing I can be doing about it now. Dreadful planet. It's kind of cute though. Five resources, just like that. I haven't been to Alpha Centauri since upgrading the lander. I'm well aware of its mineral richness. At the moment, I'm more concerned with stopping the Civil War before the Pecanc reach the Ahot. Which is gonna be hard, possibly impossible, but we'll see.
kill the beast. I don't remember which portal it is, but one of the ones near the bottom should bring me out near the top of the map. It's not this one. Could be this one. Sort of close. Not as close as I was hoping for. So I'm okay with wasting some fuel as long as I get there sooner or later. Alright, that's the ill wrath portal. <laughs> Nasty. Right near the middle of the space, really. and jubilation.
man, the planets here really suck. I missed one. It doesn't really matter. Sucks, but I'm gonna start grabbing stuff. Because I suppose any hall is better than no hall. That's much more like it. Still not amazing, but pretty good. so hard to see sometimes. Yeah, another not great but not terrible planet. Well, really it is pretty bad, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. As if this will be much of a worry later in the game.
didn't mean to skip all that. Fact is, though, it looks like I got it. I can look up the message. <sighs> I know where to find it. surface. We have finally trapped the hideous beast which has been so hard to capture these past few days. I swear, we emptied our stun batteries into that thing over a dozen times before it even slowed down. A few more shots to its barbed head and it went down, but we only had a few seconds to get it into the magnetic restraints before it started thrashing around again. Even as I make this report, that damn monster is shrieking like a steam engine and trying to tear its way free. I hope we know what we're doing, bringing that thing aboard. If it gets free inside the ship, Captain, well, I just don't want to think about it. Returning to ship. End of report. was a pop-up, but I accidentally skipped it, so instead I um, brought up the files so that I could read it to you guys. First things first, I want those guys to slow down. into the Pekong space, but I haven't found any Pekong. I have not sent them back at all, yeah.
that our year hot siblings are in need of our love and good counsel. We have waited far too long to return home and heal the wound that has kept our race apart these many centuries. When we arrive in the Serpentus constellation, we will greet our yay hot brethren with warm hugs of affection, which, I am sure, shall be returned in time. It is... We are so glad you warned us! No time to lose! We'll see you back in our home! Hello, Falcon. Good to see you. Okay, with them heading back, I can go and see Vlock. <laughs> Sex. But I'm gonna head back to Seoul real quick first. drops me, I may as well go to Alpha Centauri while I'm at it. And the game crashed. Okay then. It's not a big deal. It's just a minor nuisance. Right, I was still heading toward the Pekong. clear out every planet yet, but we should be able to clear out one or two. Everything's on fire, though. Oh my god. Mm. Keep moving, Sarah. Mm.
Now that's what I like to see. I was just talking about you to the Keel Verizzi, Captain. They expressed great interest in your explorations and struggles against the Urquan. But, like all Verizzi, I'm afraid, they were hesitant to introduce themselves for fear of, well, frightening you. In any event, it is our pleasure to meet you once again. Now, what can we do for you today? What would you like to sell, Captain? The 118 units of biological data we downloaded from your ship earn you 376 credits. to your vessel. How? Just over 20,000 years ago, when your ancestors were learning to chart the course of the moon and stars on animal horns, the sentient milieu spanned 500 light years and included the membership of a hundred worlds. Like all other star travelers, they had discovered ruins and relics of a far more ancient culture, which your species calls the Precursors. Explorers from many species spent their lives trying to piece together this ancient mystery, but of all races, the Urquan were the most bold adventurers. Their scouts, flying single ships, Penetrated far into uncharted space and landed from a million worlds. On one such mission, a young Earth one made planet fall on a small, light bearing alien world to identify some anomalous energy readings, occasionally a sign of precursor installations. Instead, the Earth One found a small, hideous creature, a Vinyari. Before the scout was able to defend itself, the Vinyari creature took control of the Earth One's mind and commanded the scout to place the Vinyari aboard the Earth One's ship, along with hundreds of its evil brood. Then, the Earth One returned to the heart of the milieu, landing on its capital planet. Within hours, every resident of the planet was a Dinyari slave. Within a month, Dinyari compelled starships and spread the evil, psychic creatures across the entire milieu. When the Dinyari took control of the milieu, one race fought back, the Taeo. These slow, quiet creatures were silicon-based life forms, but bore little resemblance to the modern Chengesu. Taeo were natural immune to the Dinyari psychic compulsion. They were unaffected by the creature's power, and 
the Dingyare would not permit anyone to exist outside their control. So they ordered the remaining races of the moon to attack and destroy the Taheo home planet. This planet was one of the few milieu worlds located in this region of space. I believe you call their star Delta Volcatule. Their home was a moon revolving about the second planet. I'm sad to say that the Taheo were indeed eliminated. However, at the time of their devastation they had completed a device which they thought would give other races psychic immunity like their own. What happened to this device? This shield? It's hard to say. Maybe it was destroyed in the attack on their home world. Maybe not. Okay. Thank you, Melnerme. That will save me some money on fuel. Ask an if you ask a question like that, the answer is somehow going to be yes. It was just a silly joke about the way it looked. The particular planet. Welcome back, Captain. It's something I think you should know. We're receiving a priority distress call from the Zakfat homeworld at Alpha Tukane. The signal was urgent but extremely weak. The only portions of the transmission that we can be sure of are help. Black destroyer. Planet under attack. Help. Worse than Zebranki, whatever that means. And finally, health. This will really help, Captain. The analysis reads as follows. Subject, hostile alien creature. Data? This is newly promoted junior scientist Hawkins reporting. Dr. Chu, you know, he's the leader of the section. He's still in sick bay. 
He's been there ever since that thing took a swipe at him and he got too close to the cage. I guess it's got like his triple jointed arms or something with spikes and razor plates all over. And the data? Oh yeah, right, right. The subject is a xenoteratomorph, a big honking one, I might add. He eats everything, plants, animal tissue, wood, ceramic, plastic, asbestos fibers, several types of metal chairs, a desk, and about half of everything a security officer wears. What it doesn't eat, it chews. And what it doesn't chew, well, it breaks up into tiny little pieces. What? Summary? Oh yeah, summary. Uh, the sooner you get that thing off the starbase, the less likely it is that thing will get loose and kill us all. Uh, I, I guess that's it. That's the end of our scientist report. Bring back lots of... Okay, so our friends, the Zopfot Pick, need help. Fortunately, I can get there really quick. Unnecessary for your species. The words. The words. The birds. 
Alien, you have spoken the words. You have spoken them rightly. We will explain to you about the Dinyari, our slave masters. The Taelo, our only friends, whom we exterminated. And our reasons why we cleanse the galaxy of all other sentient life. We have explained this before, over 20,000 years ago. Your words, why do you do this thing? Echo that ancient plea. You see, alien, we were a proud and mighty race, who were cruelly enslaved. For thousands of years we had no free will. We were nothing more than tools. Never again will anyone enslave our people. We cleanse the galaxy of such threats. It was on a routine planet fall that one of our milieu scout ships first met the Dinyari, the creatures you know as our talking pets. But the Dinyari were different then. They were evilly intelligent and wielded psychic powers to control the minds of others. They wanted to rule the universe. We had no choice but to give it to them. Our Urquan scout ships transported the Dinyari through the milieu. The war for dominance, such as it was, was quick and bloodless. Within weeks, the Dinyari controlled all races but one, the Taelo. We evolved on a hostile world, the descendants of solitary hunters. In a world where one species is the dominant killer, one's only threat is one's brother, one's sister, any one of one's species. Civilization did not come easily to us. We earned it. We mastered our hatreds and murderous desires to form a mighty culture. In those ancient days, there was no Kor Ah or Kazer only the Urquan. We explored our world and then the space beyond. Here we met the six races of the sentient milieu. Here we met the Taelo, the only species we ever called friend. Our association with the Taelo and the milieu lasted for 3,000 years. We, the Urquan, who could not tolerate the presence of others, became the milieu's scouts, their solitary explorers. Of all the species we have met, only the Taelo did not trigger our instinctive territoriality. They were the only people we could stand with, or talk to, without the hunter inside us screaming, kill the interloper, rip out its life. We believe that the same factors that made the Taelo not threatening to us, their unusual rock-like biology, also gave the Taelo natural immunity to the Dinyari's psychic compulsion. The Dinyari would not permit this. After they had conquered all six of the other races in the milieu, they commanded us to attack the Taelo. And we did. The Taelo would not fight back. They died. For thousands of years, we were unthinking slaves to the Dinyari. Like the five other surviving races of the old milieu, we had no choice. The Dinyari's compulsion was too strong to resist. But the Dinyari were not satisfied with their slave races. The Yuli and the Draw were inferior, they decided. And so they instructed us to incinerate their worlds. And we did. The Dinyari had a special liking for us, Urquan. So they began to tinker with our genes to improve us, their favorite slaves. Their efforts to split the Urquan into two sub-races, the Green Urquan, a fed scientists and bureaucrats, and the Black Urquan, their effectuators, the builders, the fighters, the doers. The core are, are the Black Urquan, the Kazerts are the Green. I grow tired of talking alien, and your time grows short. I will continue for but a moment longer. When we discovered that intense pain could block the Dinyari's mental powers, we were able to destroy them, but it took years. Can you imagine, alien, what it must have been like to wear an excruciator? To live in endless screaming pain for months on end? No, 
You cannot. No, it is not. There is more you must hear. When the war was over, the great core Ah rose from our ranks and declared the path of now and forever. We would cleanse the galaxy. No one would ever threaten the Urquan this way again. We had cleansed one of the three remaining milieu races and were in orbit around the second's home world. From the surface came a plea, identical to the words you spoke a few moments ago. The one-eyed creatures, the male known, asked so simply, so clearly, that we felt compelled to explain. While we did so, the Xertsa appeared. They would not permit us to destroy, they said. Enslaved, yes. Imprisoned, yes. But never destroy. The moment was tense. Someone opened fire. The first doctrinal war had begun. While we fought, the male Nung escaped. We never found them again. When our battle was done, we, the core Ah, were defeated. However, the Kazertsa let us go. We were exiled. We traveled through space. We built the strength of our battle fleets and continued our plan to cleanse threats from the galaxy for all Earth One. You have heard our words, and perhaps you understand us a bit better. But now, it is time for us to cleanse you. Versus the Arquan. Also, I had the same thought, Alley Cat. You can shoot very often, but those shots count. Savior, our Savior, you have rescued us from certain destruction. Howie, baby, that was a close one. The black ship appeared in orbit several days ago and began raining down bolts of destructive energy on the surface of our planet. Fortunately, we were able to focus our planetary shield to deflect the energy blasts away from our city. Unfortunately, large sections of our planet's beautiful wilderness have been annihilated. Entire ecosystems destroyed. Oh! That makes me really mad. I mean, attacking helpless, intelligent alien species, that's one thing. But toasting our cute little wood jukes and trainars, that is really low. If the black ship had been accompanied by others of its kind, we wouldn't have been able to stop the rain of destruction. They would have killed us all. Well, in that case, better those jukes and narcs than us, right? Captain, it is clear that in matters of war, you are more capable than ourselves. With this in mind, we would like to give you our four finest starships and crew. I hope they bring you many victories. Try not to lose them all right away. It's been pretty quiet, Captain. Nothing new to report. Are you crazy? What about the Bungie Championships? Why should we tell the Earth Captain about that? He wouldn't be interested. Oh, yeah? How do you know? Because I'm not even interested. Nobody with any brains is interested in Frungy. Well, what about me, huh? I love Frungy. It's a sport of kings. Gee. Oh, all right. He wouldn't know any of the kings anyway. No, we have nothing new to report. Nope, not a thing. Sure, what do you want to know? 
Just ask away. Ah, culture look. Okay, so the Zogfot pick are now safe for the time being, leaving me free to do other things. Right, I have to go to hyperspace first. Can't do that in true space. One. Okay, perfect. Well, I just gotta go to Admiral Zach's. I so blessed. My favorite friends, the humans, are back. Captain, Not yet. It is good but to I see actually you. remember where he is. You humans are so interesting, so beautiful. You know, I have many pictures of your species. I keep them on my walls to inspire me. Ah, a most excellent piece of news. My chiton rasps and moistens with excitement. I have been looking forward to this for so long. <laughs> My subordinates stand ready to receive the beast from the ship. Effect its transfer, and then we shall give you the makings you desire. Oh yes, no problem. Even now my subordinates are bringing them up from the surface. So let's not waste time. Send that delightful beast over immediately. Captain, Captain, we are both creatures of honor. If I say that the show fixing maidens are on their way up from the surface, then they are. You will have them shortly. Accept my word. Now please, Captain, the beast. Really, Captain, my honor is in Malign me and I am deeply hurt. I thought we had built some trust between us. Different than we may be, but no, I perceive now the same bigotry and misunderstanding that's brought our two species to a war. This was our chance to cement a good relationship between human and fox. With my influence, the High Council could easily have been swayed to view the human cause in a more favorable light. Ah. My new child is on board. Such a big one, isn't he? And so frisky. I am delighted beyond words that you have given me the beast count. But I am afraid that there has been a slight change in our plans. Regrettable, but necessary. Oh, my beautiful, luscious human. I had thought that the hideous, violent monster you have given me would complete my collection of ugliness, my menagerie of monsters. I was wrong. 
you, my human love, are the most vile, the most fierce, and wretched. My collection could never be complete without you. I need you, Captain. But alas, I fear you will not give your consent willingly. Am I right? Therefore, Sub-Commander Dux, terminate communications, warm up my modified intruder, engage the precursor warp to nullifier. <laughs> Prepare for battle! Sub-Commander, why has my main console become an operator? The transmit mode is locked! What do you mean the central system computer is damaged? How? The beast? Escaped? No, Sub-Commander, this is impossible! It couldn't escape from our strongest containment system! It's what? Dex 5 and 6? A living crewman? Sound the alarms, you fool! Where is it now? Engineering report! Engineering! Sub-Commander, seal bulkhead! Sub-Commander, are you listening to me? What are you staring at? Pay attention, Sub-Commander! Give me a report on its position! What are you staring at? Behind me? What? Report from surface. In the Vux Commander's menagerie, we have found what appears to be functioning cryo tanks containing a dozen bipedal creatures. We can't be sure, but through the tank's fogged viewports, we think we can see young Shofixi females inside the freezer units. We have transferred the cryo tanks to the lander and are returning to the ship. End of report. Alas, poor Zex. We didn't really know him. But damn, was he ever ugly. Captain, I'm ready to assist you. Not too much today, Captain. I hope you have better luck next time.
The analysis reads as follows. Subject, Chofixi maiden. Data, subjects appear to be 16 Chofixi females, all in young adulthood. Subjects appear to be in good condition, with little or no freezer burn or other degeneration. Hibernation maintenance units are functioning normally, and resuscitation equipment is easily activated. Summary, we can wait them, but why? What should we tell them? That they're an extinct species? Until such a time as we feel we can induce artificial parthenogenesis, or otherwise give the show fix these sexual viability, our recommendation is to keep them as they are asleep. That's the end of our scientist report. To all the nerd quant- Make peace with the Vox, but you can't though. Better save the game. It is literally not possible. No such ability exists in the game's source code. He almost killed himself. I see you're back for even more humiliation. You flatulent Urquan Puss Cup. Like he was banging against the planet, but fortunately he wasn't doing anything. Why, you wallowing, phlegm, filthy, grunty, belly ricker, you. Hey! Urquan never insulted me before. Who do you say you are? Oh, I am sorry. I must be reprimanded. When we report back to Star Control, suddenly 
Your words ring in my ears. Captain, is it true? Have the old one been destroyed? Has the ultimate sacrifice of my people resulted in freedom for the Alliance? Okay, and that takes care of that. Be some time before the Shafix D um, finish, so I will have to make myself busy in other ways. Hmm. I'm to think of it, I know what I should be doing. Go to the Taiyo home planet. That's pretty important. I'm sure that I have no idea what you could possibly mean. Favorite slaves. 
This is probably because the Iroquois were the most psychically sensitive, the most easily compelled. As the centuries of Vidyari dominance passed, what was once the sentient milieu deteriorated and degenerated into a great galactic gulag. The alien races which did not serve with the efficiency and speed demanded by the Dinyare were ruthlessly burned from the faces of their worlds. The agents of this genocide were inevitably the Dinyare's favorite pet, the Urquan. After almost 2,500 years of unrelenting Dinyare control, there were only four living member races of the once great sentient milieu. By this point, the Dinyari had used genetic manipulation to split the Urquan into two subspecies. The Green Urquan. Scientists, technicians, and administrators who were responsible for maintaining the limited infrastructure of the Dinyari civilization and the Black Earthworm, who filled the ranks of basic laborer and combat soldier. Then, a chance discovery by an Earthworm named Bezerza led to the violent overthrow of the Dinyane Slave Empire. The Urquan named Kazetza was a green, a researcher specializing in repairing the mental damage inflicted by long-term exposure to the Dinyane psychic compulsion. By this point in history, the Dinyane had grown black in their dominance, and on occasion, accidentally permitted their slaves moments of self-direction. Kazetza was able to use those few scattered minutes to compose a theory. From its observations, Kazetza realized that when a slave died, Dinyari disconnected from the slave's mind let get two to be dragged down to death. First, the Iroquois scientist uncovered the fact that when a slave underwent great pain, the Dinyari temporarily disconnected. But that the degree of pain had to be extreme, nearly lethal. chose its moment carefully. It waited until it was near an open transmission unit. Then, in a short moment of mental freedom, the Urquan injected itself with a dose of acidic poison, sending incredible waves of pain through its long body. In the few moments before its death, Kazerza was able to wrest control of the transmitter to send word of its discovery across the planet and into space as well. Before the Dinyari knew what was happening, Urquan everywhere were hacking at their own bodies with chunks of glass, burning themselves horribly, doing anything that would give them the few seconds of freedom necessary to find the nearest Dinyari and crush the breeding creature. As they gained longer and longer periods of control, the Urquan developed new tools and weapons to destroy their evil masters. The most gruesome of these devices was the excruciator, a mechanism which was inserted directly into the brain and generated a constant stream of agony. The Dinyari 
could not bring themselves to make the necessary mental connection with these tortured earth ones. They were slaughtered by the thousands. The Urquan slave revolt was won. When the last Urquan was free of psychic compulsion, when the last free Dinyare was dead, the combined might of the Urquan starfleets met in orbit above the Dinyare home. They had come together to make two important decisions. First, how to punish the few frightened Dinyari left below on the planet's surface. Second, how to ensure that never again would the Earth One be made slaves. The first decision was made swiftly. The Dinyari would not be allowed to die. Ah, that was too kind of fate. Instead, the creatures would be genetically modified into some sentience. They would become dumb animals. These low creatures would be further debased by serving the Earth One for all eternity in the most demeaning way the Earth One could imagine acting as translators making physical contact with other species, whom the Iroquois now considered grossly inferior to themselves and revolting. The second decision, how to ensure their freedom permanently, caused great turmoil. You need to and to you need credits to purchase our trade items to earn credits and Okay That traitor completely distracted me, and he went on for so long. Mm. I mean, it's mm. good information and all, but... Gosh. Mm. Yeah. It's great lore. But he tells it so slow. into some joke about me being hot. Because I'm pretty sure that's just too easy of a joke for somebody to make.
be peeping. I am squirting nice colors. Why? The reason. Camper friends have come to Taylor Playground. Why are you coming to this? Yes, yes. You say words, then I say. It is fun in between. More fun than dancing. Many gravity centers in heavy space make good party places. This is why we like the new town. So many campers, and then what? Even the playground. Such a surprise. At this playground, the Halo are making time jokes. It is too funny for the oars. The Halo are in heavy space, and next what? They spread to pretty space, because Denari are chasing them. Now, Denari are sleeping, so oars can chase them. Then we can have a party. They are even better campers than you. Do not feeling bad. You are good enough campers, but not yet. I will tell. This is the Halo Playground. Do you know? The Halo is not anymore the heavy space. They are not here. To play with the Halo, oars must spread into pretty space. There are so many good places for this here. Oars are happy. Of course, you do not know the Halo. You are campers. You cannot go into pretty space. Too bad. You are asked if oars are upset. Oars are not upset. You are happy campers. Certainly, you are only slow time walkers. It is not fun on the surface in slow time. If you want to go, that is okay. Well, it's highly likely at the very least. It would be surprising if they weren't, but certainly it could be anything at this point. Report from surface. Captain, you found an unusual glowing rock thing here on the surface. When we first noticed it, we thought it was a naturally fluorescing igneous dike. But upon closer observation, we can only conclude that this object is artificial in origin. Taelo design. Those guys sure built to last. Simple radiometrics show an age in excess of 20,000 years. Regardless of how old it is, it continues to radiate energy all up and down the EMR spectrum, with a concentration of emissions in the red slash infrared eight or infrared range. Blah. Even though it weighs a ton, we will definitely lug this puppy up to the ship. One last comment before I sign off. Ensign Hodkins and Witherspoon have been reported have reported Blah have both reported extreme headaches and mental disarray whenever they approach the Taiwo device. None of the rest of us have any problems, so either the ensigns are just some kind of, just being babies, or the Taiwo device produces some kind of shield that affects only certain people's minds. Maybe the scientists back at the Starbase will tell us more. End of report. <sighs>
happens to a lot of fan projects. It's important to have an established scope of the project beforehand, or you just you can get out of hand with ideas that keep on coming. And you know, in many cases, there's no such thing as a bad idea per se; it's just a bad place for it. And in fan projects, you often end up in situations where they try to fit everything in, and it's just not possible. It's just, you know, irrational. But naturally, that's not very obvious unless you're a seasoned developer already, so it's a mistake everybody kinda has to make once. Uh, they own the trademark, they own the name, and they can keep making Star Control games, but they can't use any of Paul and Fred's properties. Like, they can't use the aliens. So essentially, they still have the rights, but Paul and Fred never wanted the Star Control name anyway. In my opinion, a bad idea is just a good idea that's not being applied properly. Or isn't a proper fit for a specific thing. Just as a daily reminder, every single one of you is a wonderful person. Be proud of yourselves. Don't let life get you down too much. I know it can be hard, but it'll always look up. I mean, they weren't very well going to make them remove them, considering they're so in instrumental to the story of Origin. But, um, you know, that's the only reason an exception was made, I feel. Now this is my idea of a playground. It even has blood monkeys. Yeah, they are, but only um, as these really small things that aren't pointed out in any way. It's somewhat like an easter egg, but not. Although they really shouldn't have put that in, considering the legal battle was still going on. using generic icons for them.
Right, this place was too dangerous when I originally went there, I think. The difficulty of this planet, the stuff on it's kind of not so great. remember anymore. This place is ridiculously hot, but the resources are pretty worth it. <laughs> just, be, just gotta be careful not to overdo it on the crew. Also, I am planning on stopping tonight fairly soon. Maybe after I deal with the Yahat, if I, um, if enough time has passed.
like eat a bunch of fire just for that. That's a nice haul. It's another one of these planets. Very vegan friendly. Basically, we've reached a point where everything is just on fire all the time, everywhere. I often feel that way in life. Fuifo is just fine. <laughs> My cargo containers are full. Yeah, this trip is about the same as just using Quasi Space, so I may as well just make it. I just hope it's been long enough. I no longer remember. Eh. It's either been long enough or close to it. Oops.
I'm at your disposal, Captain. Not too much today, Captain. Not too much, it was over 10,000. The analysis reads as follows. Subject to ALO device. Data, whoever the ALO were, they were clever, way past us, probably even beyond the Ken Jesu. As far as I can tell, with all our equipment, this thing is a rock. Just a rock. Nothing but a rock. However, if you feed a current into it, anywhere along its surface, everyone on board this starbase who has Esper potential gets a bad headache. Well, we checked a bit more into that, and when the Taelo thing is active, all evidence of Psycon interaction is flatlined. Nothing gets through. Summary, if you keep the Taelo rock device thing on board your vessel, I'll bet you're immune to any form of psychic attack, or at least mostly immune. That's the end of our scientist report. So by January, it should be done. Or at least by sometime in January. Um, I'm going to go into Unga space. I did. It's okay, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. So straight into Unga space. By the time I get back, it'll almost definitely be show fixity time. There's some Arquan ships around here. Because there are a lot of these specific. It's one of those free money planets. No real danger, good resources. <sighs> Looks like this one is pretty much that too. 
that this one at least has earthquakes. these planets. But this time everything's just thumping around instead of constantly on fire. And nothing but green resources is the same though. <laughs> Oh. Oh, I wasn't even trying to find this yet. I was just trying to get the planets in the area. Good idea. May I just say I'm behind you 100%. But unfortunately, the Ula are all too busy to come to the Hyperway Caster right now, so uh, come back later, or much later. Yeah, I will explain nothing, monkey boy. Your stupid curiosity has sealed your doom. You could have left well enough alone. You could have departed this planet alive. But no, I am afraid you have stuck your stiff, protruder and sensing organ into one too many dark holes, Captain. And now you shall pay the price. Go get yourself killed. I, -yah! I cannot compel you. Your mind is closed. How can this be? I am forced to resort to more primitive measures. Boom, Doc Commander! Summon your ten combat ships and attack this intruder instantly. Oh. Well, that's bad. Umga, Umga. How to fight Umga. I'll take a look. Right, they just have the silly confetti beam. I remember. be able to take them right out with the Arcadia. I'll probably use my guns more sparingly. Um, that's the kind of range, huh? Crap, crap, crap. Forgot about that. Crap, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, 
That is unfortunate. In that case, I think I'm going to go see the Thradash instead. I think it was Delta Japanus. I'm not entirely sure. I know this is the closest place, though. I will go and get the talking pet later. <laughs> As in next time. My goal for today is just to finish off the Yehad aspect first, and that will be where I'll go stop. Oh, okay. Perhaps after we have made you our slaves, we cannot validate your wishes. Until then, we are strong, you are weak, and our heart, we hate weak. We do not need weak friends. We only want slaves and teachers. 
this, since you have nothing to teach us and refuse to be our slave, then you are our enemy. Such logic must be obvious even to a stupid being like yourself. Talk bar, talk for sissies. We please not go to Order 14. For 10,000 years, we could not have fought and died. Learned and improved, then an all game culture 14, which claimed that all this, this perfect method was wrong. That each time we violently transformed to a new culture, we inevitably blasted ourselves back at least 500 years in development. Some people just cannot accept the cost of progress. Indeed. The foolishness of Culture 14's peaceful mining was revealed when they were conquered by Culture 15 after only a 10 year reign. And did the change to Culture 15 set us back 500 years? No! Two, maybe 300 years tops. The short span of Culture 14's reign is objective proof that as a way of life, peace is a failure. What? More talk? It amazes me that you ever got out of the orbit of your own planet. Yak, yak, yak. Yammer, yammer, yammer. Oh, very well. We will talk for a moment. Our quarter 19 is the most formidable ever to appear in Kradash space. Admittedly, we said something similar about Vulture 18, but it is true! With our rather swift defeat by the Urquan and subsequent enslavement, we realized that it was time for a change. A new culture had to be established, so of course, we began a thermal nuclear exchange to decide who would lead this new culture. We were all quite disappointed when the Urquan in orbit above our home world launched waves of fighters who intercepted all our missiles. The Urquan explained that slaves were not permitted to engage in such destructive conflicts. So my people, being superior, introduced a super lethal poison into our opponent's water and air, thus ending the conflict. <laughs> Urquan were not particularly happy about this resolution and killed all our leaders, which, under other circumstances, would have started a larger inter-Trapash war. But the Urquan appointed new leaders, apparently chosen at random, and explained that further disobedience would result in the destruction of our species. Frustrating, huh? A foolish question. We are their slaves, don't. What else would we be? When the Urquan first appeared in our space, over 50 years ago, coming from the direction of the old Fuji stars, we attacked them with gusto, zipping in to fire our Mark VI blasters, and then theoretically zipping back out to prepare for another attack run. Unfortunately, before we could sip out, our ship were either blasted to smithereens by the Earthwan's fusion bolts or were picked apart by the swarms of Earthwan fighter vessels. You may wonder why we didn't use our afterburners to escape. The answer is simple. Fifty years ago, our ship had not yet been modified for this enhancement. It was not until 2143 that maintenance and the real invented the afterburner effect. When he accidentally stuck his cigar in the aft fuel valve of the ship he was working on, the ship took off like a barn out of hell, and Rio was fried to a crisp. Yes, we remember Rio with much fondness. Of course, we have refined the device, and now that our entire fleet has been fitted with the Rio afterburners, Perhaps now, the Urquan will let us fight at their side as true battle thrones. We wanted to. Oh, how we wanted to. After all, we were the first battle thrones the Urquan slave in this part of space. We thought we had priority. 
for the Earth One Bond who were too weak to hold our own in the upcoming battles. So they left us here to part the planet. If only we had been a more stronger and less troublesome. Another reason the Earth One wouldn't take us with them was because we kept picking from two of the two battle slaves. Like the Umnab lobbies or those religious idiots, the Ilrad. Where did they go, you ask? This is a secret, of course. We can't tell you. If we told you that they were fighting a secret war against a mysterious invader, you might find some way to use that information against our masters. So forget it. No secrets. This won't be a problem. At all. Ever. lot more than the Thrabash. Ooh, that really hurt too, and it wasn't even... It's not like I was trying to. into a tiny bit of the afterburner. Well, the afterburn, I suppose you could say.
completely lost count. Right about that much. I'm just wondering if this will even stop on its own or not. Straight, I'm inclined to say it won't.
What's this? An un a wonderful we the try to ask of no what right, so, okay. what's this? An unknown alien species. How wonderful. Someone known to fight. We the try to ask of Alter 19. Famous for one combat route. No well the value of a good fight. Either you win and prove your superiority, or you'll lose and are vanquished. The vanquished is lucky, you may survive to learn an important lesson from its defeat. This is the way of the Thradash. Fight and learn and improve. All other cultural schemes are inferior. This is a proven fact. What have you to say before we begin combat? Attention, you escaped our instructional session. But this time, things are different. We, the Urquan slaves of Orchard 19, have engaged in a long term buildup of weapons, assuring us that we shall prevail. If you wish merely to count coup, seek our ships in space. Now, do you wish to speak, or shall we simply start blasting? Okay. I guess I'll deal with this a bit more. Fortunate to have to go about it that way. And there's a limitless source right there. Anyway, manageable. Oh, what a laugh! You are the least battle we. we but that would mean I've beaten like four. Make about seven. You 
already know who we So we'll call that 10. What the? I glitched we fall out. That's bad. I mean, I made Fleefo too strong. Yeah. At this point, I will probably end the stream after I finish this part with Stratash. Okay, so we'll call that 15. I guess that's 19-ish. Man, it's so satisfying when I get them in one shot like that. Come <laughs> on. 
Okay, so that's 23-ish. I'd imagine one more group should do it if it's 25. that, we will be stopping for today. And 
as ever. I just want to say how much I appreciate that all of you are here with me. That you are able to join us. You're all wonderful, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Take care, everyone.